In this video, I'm gonna to explain to you how to challenge a DUI driver's license suspension after you've been arrested. Hi, I'm Javier La Torre. I'm a criminal defense attorney and civil litigation attorney here in Tucson, Arizona. And I help people fight for their freedom and protect their future. Let's get on with the video. Okay, so first you need to understand this. Every time you get a DUI in the state of Arizona, there's two actual cases that come off of that arrest. Okay, so you have the criminal case, which is the one where you go to court and they're trying to put you in jail or whatever, maybe find you and stuff like that, make you go to classes or whatnot. And then there's a different case. It's an administrative law case. It's not in a court of law. It's not in a judicial court of law. Okay. And it's an administrative case regarding the suspension of your privilege to drive in the state of Arizona. That is handled at the Arizona Department of Transportation. They have a section of the Arizona Department of Transportation called the Executive Hearing Office. So they have their own judges and these are not judicial judges, okay? These are administrative judges. So they're employed by the executive branch, not the, the judicial branch, okay? And these judges will, if you ask for a hearing, they will review the order of suspension issued on your driver's license to see if it's appropriate to suspend your license or not. So it's a way to give you due process, but it's a lesser level of due process as opposed to a criminal case, right? Because suspension of your driver's license is one thing, going to being incarcerated is another, right? So anyway, every DUI has these two cases. A lot of people don't understand that. That, but there's two cases an administrative case and a criminal case in this video we're going to talk about the administrative driver's license suspension case not about the criminal case if you want information about the criminal case I'm gonna put up here a, a card to a video I did that explains to you the basics about DUI and how to go about after arrest and there's several videos on my YouTube channel about DUI so you Feel free to take a look at those. But in this video, we're gonna talk about the administrative driver's license suspension, okay? So we're not talking about the criminal case. Another thing that I need to explain is, I'm not gonna discuss a commercial driver's license, a CDL, some different rules, different process. It's a more strict standard if you have a CDL, right? So I'm not gonna go into that. If, if any of you are interested, leave a comment down below. If enough people are interested, I'll do a full video on CDL, the consequences of DUI. So if, if people are interested, let me know and I'll do a video, okay? So in this video, what we're talking about is regular, normal person's driver's license, suspension after DUI arrest. So how do your driver's license get suspended after a DUI arrest? So at some point, an order of suspension is issued on your privilege to drive. So there's two ways this order is issued. One is on the side of the road after you did your whole thing with the cop and you did your whatever it is that happened on the side of the road, they drew your blood, whatever. The cop can issue an order of suspension. He issues that in a form called an admin per se, implied consent affidavit. That form at the bottom of the page has an order of suspension. So the cop will fill that out, will mark it and sign it and give it to you. So when he gives it to you, he's serving you with the order of suspension. The other way is sometimes you don't get that on the side of the road for whatever reason, but sometimes you don't get it. Sometimes they charge you later or whatever. So what happens is you get a letter from ADOT in the mail. It's called a corrective action notice. ADOT is telling you, hey, your driver's license is suspended because you got charged or arrested for DUI or whatever, and your suspension starts on this date. So on both cases, you have 30 days to request a hearing. So to suspend your license, like I said, you need an order of suspension. So this is a, an administrative order of suspension. So one of the things that you need to understand is the, the process by which your driver's license or your privilege to drive in the state of Arizona is suspended is through an administrative procedure with Arizona Department of Transportation. It's not a court case. It's not a judicial case, right? So there will be a different judge, what is, what is called an administrative law judge. These are not judicial judges. This is an administrative law judge who only does administrative cases. He basically reviewed the administrative laws of the state of Arizona, basically the statute, certain statutes and the administrative code. And they look at, at your suspension and determine whether the suspension is appropriate or not based on the circumstances of your case, right? So it's still due process. You still get a hearing, but it's a lesser level of due process, right? There's not gonna be a jury. There's not, the rules are laxer and we'll get to that, but that's how you do it. So the big thing here is when you request a hearing, the suspension of your driving privileges will be stayed. What does that mean? They will put a pause on that suspension. So the, the notice you'll get, it tells you that your suspension, the suspension begins on this date. But if you ask for a hearing within the 30 days of the, of the of service, that does not happen. What happens is the suspension is stayed and you can continue driving until a hearing is held. And if the judge at that point, the administrative law judge upholds the suspension, then you can pick your date and you and your start your suspension. Usually they'll give you like 30 days to get ready or something like that. But it's a different process and it all starts by requesting a hearing. 
Before we get to requesting a hearing and stuff like that, there are two types of suspension that can be ordered. It's the regular 90-day suspension, the regular DUI suspension is 90 days, or 12-month suspension, and that's a, an implied consent refusal suspension. So what's the difference? So once you're arrested for DUI, the cops will ask you for a sample of your breath or blood usually to test for alcohol or drugs, right? Now, the state of Arizona has a statute, they call it the implied consent statute, that says that anybody who drives in the state of Arizona has consented to a test of their body fluids to check them for alcohol or drugs, okay? That's the law, that's the statute in the state of Arizona. After arrested, if you refuse the request from an officer to get a sample of your breath or your blood, your driver's license will be suspended for 12 months for the refusal. If you submit to the test, the suspension will be 90 days. So those are the two types of suspensions, right? Whatever type of suspension you got, whether it's a 90 day or a 12 month suspension, once you're served with the order of suspension, you have 30 days to ask for a hearing. So how do you request a hearing? How do you challenge the suspension of your driver's license, right? Well, you have to file a request for hearing with the Arizona Department of Transportation Executive Hearing Office. At the end of the video, I will give you a link where you can go and download the form that the ADOT has, that the Executive Hearing Office has for requesting that hearing. And also you'll have access to watch a video where I explain to you how to fill it out. Okay. So anyway, so you file your request for hearing. Usually you submit it via email and once they receive it, they will put a stay on the suspension. So they pause the suspension. Suspension doesn't go forward until after the judge decides. And only if the judge says, yeah, okay, the suspension was appropriate. Let's get it done. You can request a hearing yourself, or if you have an attorney, your attorney should do that for you. Most of you as attorneys, we all include that. Every time I'm hired, uh, that's part of what I do. I'll, I'll ask for any clients that hire me. I'll represent them in the criminal case and in the admin suspension case, okay? But let's talk about the hearing, okay? So let's say you went through that, you, you went to the link that you'll get at the end of the video and you filed your request, you, you filled out that form, you filed it with the uh, Arizona Department of Transportation Executive Hearing Office, then you call, you confirm they received it, and then you got to confirm that a stay is placed on the suspension. Sometimes it takes more than one try because sometimes a cop won't file the paperwork right away with ADOT. So you file a request for hearing and they don't have a suspension order yet because the cop hasn't filed it. In that case, what I do is in my office, we request the hearing every week until they tell us, okay, now we found it, now the stay is in place, right? Eventually you'll get a letter from ADOT, it's called a stay letter, that is informing you of the stay on your on the suspension. It's, it's telling you we receive your request, it's a, it's a timely request, so we'll put a stay on it, okay? And then eventually you'll get another notice of hearing. You get to something in the mail with the date and time of your hearing. Now, what kind of hearing is this, right? Well, this is a telephonic hearing, okay? So you don't go to court, you don't go to a hearing room or anything, you just do it over the phone. Everybody appears telephonically nowadays, okay? So how does that work? So once you get the notice of hearing, they'll tell you on this date at this time, and they'll tell you, give us a call number, a callback number so the, we can call you. It's very important that you provide that number because if you don't, they won't call you and they say you didn't show up, okay? So as soon as you get that confirmation hearing, you should contact the executive hearing office and let them know, hey, here is my number. You can do it via email. Here's the number for a callback for this hearing on this date, okay? Just make sure they get it, okay? Because if you don't give it to them, they'll say you didn't show up and you're gonna lose automatically, okay? So you got a suspension, you filed your request for hearing, you got your stay letter, you got your notice of hearing, and then you provided them with a callback, right? A callback number. So then all you gotta do is on the day of the hearing, be available on that phone number. Eventually you get a call from the judge, okay? The administrative law judge will call you. That's how they do it usually. Don't be scared if they take a little bit, because usually they're, if they're not running behind, sometimes the cop doesn't show. So they give the cops a few minutes. I had 10, 15 minutes that they give them. And if they don't show, they'll let you know, okay? If the cop doesn't show, you win automatically, okay? Eventually, you get a call from the judge. So, and then you're going to have to do the hearing over the phone right then and there. So wh what's the hearing about? How does this work? Okay, so let's go through that a little bit, right? So you're going to get a call from the judge. You'll be on the phone. The cops will be on the phone. The judge will be on the phone. And he or she will organize the hearing and start the process, right? So what happens? The judge judge will take testimony over the phone from the cops, 
right? Because it's the department's burden to prove that, that the suspension was appropriate. And then you can present evidence and you'll be able to cross-examine the cops and present your own witnesses if you want to. But let's start with what is the scope of the hearing? What is the judge have going to decide, right? How is he going to confirm or not confirm the suspension? Well, this goes back to the two types of suspension, right? So if you have a regular 90 day suspension, so the first thing that they have to prove is that, that the officer had reasonable grounds to believe that you were guilty of DUI. I mean, that you were driving or under physical control of a vehicle while impaired to the slightest degree from consumption of alcohol or drugs prior to driving. That's basically it. The next thing they have to prove is that they placed you under arrest for violation of the relevant DUI statutes, whichever is there several, okay? And then the judge just determines whether a test was taken and whether the results indicated either that you had a BAC, a blood alcohol or breath alcohol concentration equal to or greater than 0.08, or that there was a, an illegal drug in your system or a, a prescription only drug or any drug that impaired your ability to drive. So basically those are the elements. The other things that the department has to prove is that the testing method that was used was valid and reliable and whether the tests were accurately evaluated, right? These two, I've never seen a judge even ask that. It's one of those things. They just have a certified document and they'll take that as face value, okay? You can challenge it though if you want to, okay? The other option is if the suspension is for refusal, then it really doesn't matter what your BAC was. It doesn't really matter because at that point, the only thing that they have to prove is one that again, that the officer had reasonable grounds to believe that you were guilty of DUI, that you were driving under the influence of alcohol or drugs while impaired to the slightest degree from consumption prior to driving, right? That you were placed under the under arrest and that you refused to submit to the test. And after your refusal that you were informed of the consequences of the refusal and you still refused. So how does it work? So the officer will ask you for a sample or breath or blood. One of the two usually is blood. If you say no, they have this, the admin per se thing has a bunch of admonitions on the back. So they'll just read those to you and say, if you refuse, you can't delay. If you refuse, blah, 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 blah. All these horrible things are going to happen to you. And you're going to get suspended for 12 months. So they'll read all those things to you and they have to show to the judge that they did that. Okay. So those are the things that the department has to prove. How do they prove them? A cop just calls in and testifies. That's it. That's all they do. Sometimes they'll submit a copy of the admin per se. Sometimes they'll submit a copy of the, the blood results, right? But that's basically it. And what will happen is if there's documentation, usually the executive hearing office will email to you whatever documents they received from ADOT. Usually the blood work and the admin per se is what you'll get via email, usually, okay? So that's basically it. It's all over the phone, testimony, cross-examination, questions. The judge will ask everybody questions. You will present your evidence and then the judge will decide and the judge can void or affirm the suspension. And that's it. Now, how do you prepare for the hearing? Okay, so there's a lot of things you can do, but one of the things is you need to get the discovery from your criminal case. You want to get the police reports. You want to get the body cam video, the blood work and all that, because you want to review all that stuff so you can challenge these elements that they have to prove, right? One of the things that you want to know, for example, if you weren't driving, if you were just sleeping in the vehicle, then it's a physical control issue. So that's something that the judge would have to determine whether the officer had reasonable grounds to believe that you were in physical control of the vehicle. But if you were passed out, sleeping, parked on the side of the road, well, were you not? That's an issue that you have to argue, to the, you can argue to the judge. You want the body cam, you want to see the body cam, because you want to see if, he, if there's evidence that he actually told you the stuff that was going to happen, how it's going to happen, all that. And the body cam will also show, like if there's nothing wrong with you and you didn't do anything wrong, and if you were, and, and whatever happened on the side of the road, you were, a reasonable person would believe that you were not driving under the influence, well, you want to show that to the judge, right? Because the judge needs this evidence to make that determination. If you're going to have witnesses, for example, if you're challenging the blood results or whatever, it's rare that people do that. But if you want to, you can have your forensic expert testify to the judge why that result is not good enough. You can cross-examine all the witnesses. You can present your own witnesses. You don't have to testify. And usually I don't recommend that you do because you don't want to admit to the to any of the, these facts on the record because everything is recorded because those statements can be used against you in your criminal case you should probably talk to your lawyer to make that decision okay the department presents evidence because usually just the, those two documents and the, the testimony from one or two cops and then you can present your evidence and then the judge will decide and then later issue a written ruling now 
prior to the hearing, if you're going to present any evidence, if you want the judge to consider any evidence, you want to submit that evidence to the executive hearing office ahead of time. So you can call them. Usually you can email them whatever records you want the, the, the judge to review and you can email it and then call the executive hearing office, make sure that they receive them. Do it ahead of time because on the day of the hearing it's going to be crazy to be able to send that stuff because it's again, you're on the phone, right? And it's going to be hard for the cops to take a look at it, right? if you want to ask the cops questions about the documents, right? So you, you want to make sure that, that you get all those records in ahead of time. Now, you're at the hearing, you're ready to go. You have your evidence, you have your witnesses with you, you provided callback phone numbers for your witnesses or whatever, or you have them in, in, in your office ready to go. And then the judge calls you. First things first, if the cop does not show, make a motion to the judge to void the suspension because the department did not meet its burden. And he or she will do that. If they didn't show, if they didn't provide a callback number, they'll dismiss it, okay? They'll void it, okay? Another way you can challenge it at the hearing is you would be basically arguing based on the evidence and your cross-examination of these witnesses. You will be arguing to the judge, for example, there are no reasonable grounds for the cop to believe that you were driving under the influence of drug or alcohol will impair it to the slightest degree. He had no reason to believe that. Right. You were just driving. You were speeding. So what if you're speeding is there's no no reasonableness that can be derived from person speeding to them being impaired. Right. Everybody drives fast. Right. Well, most everybody anyway. So they have to articulate their basis. Unfortunately, in this proceeding, the bar is pretty low. It's just a preponderance of the evidence standard. They don't have to prove beyond reasonable doubt like they do in the criminal case. It's a pretty low bar evidence wise. Don't get disheartened if the judge doesn't buy it or whatever, because it's just a different level of due process. It's just an administrative hearing. It's not a judicial court. You could say you weren't driving the test. You can challenge the testing it wasn't done proper. You're probably going to need a witness to explain why that's the case and basically attack the evidence, right? For example, if you, ha if, if the cops are saying, oh yeah, red, watery, bloodshot eyes, right? Most of the time it's there, right? Uh, sometimes we get photographs and my client's eyes are not red, watery, or bloodshot. And you can show that to the judge, right? Sometimes the cop at the scene saw a bunch of errors in the field sobriety test but when you see the body cam video you can see that there weren't that many errors right so it just depends on the facts of the case and what evidence is available but for example let's say it's a 12-month suspension or refusal get the body cam right if he didn't give you your warnings if he didn't give you the admonitions if he didn't read it to you properly you might be able to challenge that is that wait a minute he didn't give me the admonitions look there's a video he didn't give me the admonition so they can't prove that. So therefore you must avoid it. It's not a proper suspension, right? Or if you never refuse, right? The only problem you're gonna have with that is they say you cannot delay testing, right? They say, even if you want a lawyer, you can't delay testing. So I think it's unreasonable. They have to give you at least a little bit of a time to see if you can contact a lawyer. But the way they see it is requesting a lawyer, you're, you're delaying the testing. And if you're delaying the testing, I can assume this is a refusal, right? So that's something you could argue depending on how much time there was between you requesting for to speak to an attorney before you agree or not, but definitely is something to consider. And you have the hearing, the, the judge will listen to you, you present your evidence and the judge decides. Once the judge decides, if the judge confirms the suspension order, usually the judge will give you an option to say, okay, well, when do you want to start your suspension? And then you can tell them, oh, well, usually they'll give you like 30 days or whatever to get ready. And then that's it. Or the judge will avoid it, right? Especially if the cop didn't show, that's a gimme. All in all, I always recommend asking for a hearing because at the very least it gives you time to look at the evidence and see if you have a defense. Because within those first 30 days after your arrest, you're not going to have the evidence you need to properly determine if you, if you can really make a case against the suspension. So asking for the hearing ahead of time because you don't believe that the suspension is proper. As long as that's a truthful statement, you're good. You ask for a hearing, you ask for your day in court, you ask for your due process rights, you ask for the hearing, you ask for an independent determination if the cop was right or not. And then the judge can make that determination and you can prepare evidence to show the judge why the suspension is not appropriate. So I always recommend doing that. At the very least, it'll buy you some time to prepare for a suspension, particularly if it's a 12 month suspension, you wanna check that out. Now, if you get suspended, there is nowadays, we have a statute that says that on your first, first DUI, you can ask for an interlock in lieu of suspension. Okay. So that's like one of those blow and drives. So basically they hook up a breathalyzer to your car. It's going to be a hassle. 
Okay, and it's going to cost you money, and it's, you're going to have to get it checked and all these things. But if it's a 12-month suspension, it's better than not driving for a year. For 90-day suspension, usually you qualify for a restricted driving permit after 30 days. What you got to do is check with MVD. If you qualify, you, they'll just make you do like a screening evaluation, and you pay, I don't know, 30, 50 bucks. I think last time I saw that, it was like 50 bucks. It's like the reinstatement fee. And then after 30 days, the first 30 days of the 90, you do not drive at all. And then after those 30 days, the following 60 of the 90 days, you can you have a restrictive driving permit so you can go to work or to the doctor and stuff like that. Those are options that you can have. You can also ask for an interlock in lieu of a suspension if you have a 90-day suspension. But if it's a 30-day suspension, I'm not sure that the, the interlock would be the best thing for you because it's, it's a hassle. Okay, and if you blow bad or whatever, they'll extend. Like if you get in the car and blow, and the, the thing says you're under the influence, you shouldn't be driving. You'll get some marks on your case, and they might extend the the interlock in your vehicle. I've had clients that they have to drive; they have to be driving, so we just put it in, right? Because they have to drive for work, right? And that's it. In the nutshell, that's how you challenge it, right? And you got to make your case to the administrative law judge that the suspension is not appropriate in your case. Okay. I hope this video has been helpful for you. Like I said to you in the beginning of the video, in the description down below, there's a link to a webpage. In that webpage, you'll find a link to the to the form at the Arizona Department of Transportation has on their website to request a hearing. Okay, you can download from there. You just click on it, and you, you can, can download from the website. It's a PDF fillable form. It's pretty simple. On that page, you'll also have access to, if you want it, you'll have access to a little video that I did that explains to you how to fill out the form and submit it. Okay, to request a hearing. Okay, so I hope this video has been helpful for you. And if you or anybody you care about is facing uh, criminal charges, feel free to give me a call. My contact information is in the description down below. Give me a call give you a free consultation, see if you're the right fit, okay? See you in the next video.